If you are like me, an animal lover and uh, somebody who really appreciates animals, then maybe you appreciate the mission of the ASPCA, the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. I really uh, applaud the work that they do in, in helping animals. However, um, you know, maybe it's because I'm an animal lover that that even their advertisements really can can be very they're they're powerful, but they can be really uh, at times off-putting to me. I mean, they show these pictures of, of animals, and this is a really mild one. They, they show some pictures of animals in miserable conditions. And I don't doubt the veracity of those pictures. I don't doubt that animals do exist in those conditions and they live there. But it's really hard to look at. And, that, and that's because, as we know, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? That's why they show these pictures and these advertisements instead of just telling us, hey, animals are in terrible conditions. They show us those conditions because they know it's going to hit us right where we live. It's hard to look at, and they want it to be hard to look at because they want us to support their mission to get those animals out of that situation. So all of that to say that, you know, as we know, pictures, graphics, all of these things are incredibly powerful complements to words and, and can, be yield, oh, can be wielded very uh, strongly in, in public relations campaigns and efforts. So I want to very briefly today talk about publicity photos and graphics and specifically their use in the world of public relations and in a public relations campaign. So, um, so first of all, why do these things matter? Why do we care about visuals? Um, and, and you know, what makes them so significant? Uh, first of all, uh, visuals of all kinds allow us to engage additional senses, right? So specifically, we're talking about visuals, we're talking about engaging the, the, um, the sense of sight in a different way, right? We're not just talking about looking at a word, and then having a p person think about that word, we're giving them an image uh, which just connects with with us differently on an emotional level on a, on a just a cognitive level of all you know at every level it engages us more and and really causes us to engage our other senses and when we hear about things but then we see things that it can engage our other senses even when we see a really delicious burger on the screen it makes us want that burger it makes us start to salivate we can taste that burger right we can smell it cooking on the grill and we want you know we can hear it sizzling it just really powerfully engages additional senses visuals do it also clarifies a message right again words are ambiguous and you know language is ambiguous in general that's a principle of communication but um, but when we use visuals we can bring people onto a specific uh, page on the onto the same page right we we, we can uh, clarify a message in such a way that uh, that it makes it really really clear if we just said for example basketball player we could all be thinking about a different basketball player but if we said michael jordan or if we said lebron james or whatever or we said uh caitlin clark right now so those are specific visuals though it brings us all on to the same message it clarifies things and we say oh that's what they're exactly what they're talking about right it, it makes it very much clear to it clearer to us than uh, than just the language itself it also centers our perspective again not just a basketball player, but a specific basketball player, not just a car, but a specific car, a, you know, a 68 Camaro or, you know, whatever it is. Um, it centers our perspective, puts us all on the same page. Again, brings us all together instead of, you know, if we just said car, we could be all over the place. People could be thinking about all kinds of different cars. But if we say 68 Camaro, are we, are we say something, you know, we could use more concrete language in that way. Then it really centers perspectives and brings us all together on the same page uh, much more. It also can cross language barriers, right? When, when uh, you have people speaking different languages, but you can show them a picture of something and we can recognize, you know, when somebody's happy or somebody sad or, or recognize different logos for branding, right? Regardless of what language you speak, we can recognize those types of things, especially those kinds of nonverbal cues. So um, it can cross language barriers. So even if, if the language doesn't match up, we can use visuals to connect with people. Um, so again, the word, you know, if I said cow, um, that may not mean anything to, to somebody, but if I showed them a picture here, then whatever language they speak, they would know what I'm talking about. Right? If I said this thing, this animal, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so it crosses language barriers. It also can save times. It can bring us into, it, it can again clarify the message, centers perspective, crosses languages, and it does all these things in a, in a faster way. Um, it brings us to, you know, we don't have to spend as much time explaining something a lot of times. If we have that visual, cor you know, correlation to something that people can get there faster, their mind can get there faster, and we can get everybody on the same page and moving in the same direction faster. So it can save time when we use visuals to help clarify information and, and clarify that message. 
and it can establish branding, which is significantly important for organizations, especially larger organizations. If, if branding is important, and it should be, whether it's just your logo or whether it's your, you know, corporate ethos or whatever it is, your branding should be important. Who are you as an organization? What is important to you? Your visuals represent that. That's why that's why companies protect them so vigorously. That's why if you if I started to use the Nike logo, just that swoosh logo right on my uh, YouTube page or on anything else, you can bet I would be getting a letter from the, the uh, attorneys from the legal department at Nike saying, hey, knock it off or we're going to sue you. And maybe we're already suing you or whatever. They protect those really uh, strictly because they've come to be very much associated with that organization. Right? And so these visuals can really become powerfully associated and instantly recognizable around the world. When you see that, those big uh, arches of McDonald's all over the world, you know what it is. Right? We don't need to hear somebody say, hey, that's a McDonald's. You see those arches and you know, hey, that's a McDonald's. Whether you're in the United States, whether you're in, you're in China, you're in wherever you're at, you're going to know that it establishes branding. Those visuals matter because it connects visually something with that organization and then it represents everything about that organization. Right. So we know seeing those golden arches, not only is that a McDonald's, but we know what they're about, what it's going to be like, because because they have that branding, right? that visual connection represents everything about that organization. So visuals are incredibly important. We're not going to get into this video into like all the specific details of of like how to use how to take photos. And first of all, that's not really my area of expertise. And, uh, and so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the details here, but I did want to share just a few considerations with you for, you know, if you're just getting started into this thing, some of the things you want to think about and should look into more, not just from what I'm saying, but look into this more. If you're going to start taking some publicity photos and working with graphics and things like that, because these are really technical and really important areas. And so you want to either develop your own expertise in them or you want to find somebody who has this. But you should think about things like framing. So what should be in the picture? What should not be in the picture? What should be in the center? What should be on the right and the left? And how should it be? You know, that's what we mean by framing. Should it be horizontal? Should it be landscape or should it be you know, no, vertical? Uh, so um, I, do you want to, you want to think about that and what you're trying to accomplish? All of these things have to do with what you're trying to accomplish with the photo, but we need to think about the framing, think about the angle that you're shooting from. So if you want to seem uh, some, something that seem powerful or, you know, dominating, then you would shoot it from below, right? From a lower angle, looking up. If you want it to seem like further, further away or distance wise or something, you'd shoot it from above looking down. So there are different things to think about with the angle of the, the, the photo or the graphic that you're working with. The lighting is critically important that you get this right. You know, lighting is just super important. As we talked about in our, our, our uh, video on, on video, on making video, lighting makes a huge difference. Natural lighting is great, but, uh, but you also want to make sure you account for kind of removing shadows with, with fill lights. And so you, you'll have what we call key lights and fill lights and things. So just do some research on lighting and uh, Google is amazing. You can find some great YouTube tutorials on these things, but Look into lighting and how to uh, light a photograph appropriately. Uh, the colors that you're using, the, not only the color schemes of what's in the picture, but then how much saturation do you have in the color as it's developed and digitally, how much you, you know, what's what saturation level and, and should you be playing with that kind of thing. Um, and resolution, it's really important that you use high quality graphics. Um, that they're 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 not uh, super pixelated, um, so you need to pay attention to resolution and uh, and what your particular um, uh, camera can accomplish and those types of things. So, you know, again, uh, these are just considerations, and I'm not giving you input and advice on how to do these things as you take pictures because. That's not really my area of expertise either. So if you're like me, you're going to want to call somebody in who knows about these things and can, can say, yes, this is a good picture, or let's take a good picture, or here's how to do this, right? So uh, sometimes you pull in the advice of experts and you need to know when and how to do that. But uh, these are some of the things that you ought to be familiar with at least and, uh, and consider for uh, specifically for publicity photos. Um, but just know that the same is true really for graphics and how are they placed then? in your in your material how where should they be placed on the you know should it be on the left or the right or up above or where how big should it be those types of things those are things people you know people actually get an education specifically in those things in graphic design and so if you don't have that education you need to find somebody who does either get that education or find somebody who has that expertise and make them a part of this project so you know 
on what you're doing and you're using these things well. But you ought to be at least familiar with the basic concepts of, of publicity photos and graphics so you have some understanding of what those people are talking about. Right? So you can contribute in that way as well. Okay. So again, it may take a team to put all this together. Maybe this isn't your area and, uh, and, and that's okay. You don't have to be an expert in all areas, uh, but you ought to be able to uh, reach out and find those experts and ask for help uh, if needed. And, uh, you know, pull in somebody else and borrow from their expertise for these types of things. I hope this helps you understand a little bit uh, about publicity photos and graphics and the role they play in public relations campaigns. If you have questions about, about any of these things, although obviously not about how to take a, a publicity photo, as I've discussed, that's not my area, but, uh, but you know, how do you, how do you, how do you uh, use these things and what are some important considerations for using these things? And, uh, and how do I know what I don't know? That's an important aspect of, of being in these, in these things uh, that you need to know what you don't know and know how to find people who do know it. Right? But if you have questions about any of this, please feel free to email me. I'd love to talk to you more about that. In the meantime, I hope that you can appreciate the importance of publicity photos and graphics in your future public relations campaigns.